Greetings, friend. I will reveal my top three amazing tips that show you how to solve not one, but two Sudoku X Wings in this puzzle. The last tip will make your jaw drop. Also, stay tuned for some fun facts about our Friday featured setter, Bondi. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, the first thing you want to notice is you have this one coming down, column five, and the one cutting across row eight. So it only leaves two places for one here in block eight. When you have two places for a one, I will mark that called Snyder notation. So you mark the two spots. Uh, anytime there's only two spots for a candidate in a three by three block. In this case, since they're in the same column, they are called a pointing pair. What that means is they have to be somewhere here in block eight. But since they're in the same column, then they point up the column and no other one could be in that column. And what that means is you can't have a one here anymore. And with this one coming up, on five and this one cutting across row one we can actually solve for one here in block two very nice and now let's shift our focus here to row five i thought what bonnie did here is really neat you have this four and a six right here so a four and six can't be in any of these three cells here in row five well a four and a six are also right here in column three they cannot be here either so there's only two places for the four and the six here in row five and that creates what's called a hidden pair it means since these two cans have to be somewhere in row five and they're limited to the same two cells then no other candidate can be in those cells so we can put a four and six right there and what that does for us now is with this two coming up and this two coming down allows us to solve for two right here now i know you're worried about the xy wings we're going to get to that in fact an xy wing is a strategy that normally takes uh a little bit later in the puzzle to get to because of my first tip that I'll reveal to you of why we got to wait a little bit. Okay, with this two cutting across row four, you have two spots for two here in block six. You actually you can only put a two or a six there because you got this two and the six right there. And now what you might notice is the two and the six are right here. You got this nine coming up. The only place for a nine in block five is right here. And then the last remaining candidate would be a four. So we can mark that for a four. Really nice here. Okay, so, so far we're doing just great and we're getting through this puzzle and I'm showing you how we're just kind of seeing and marking all these candidates as we move along. All right, after doing that, let's look up column six here. What we have is six candidates filled out. We got a one, three, four, five, eight, nine. We need a two, six, and a seven. Well. This cell sees a two and a seven, so that actually has to be a six. So we make this a two and that a six, and then our last remaining cell now has to be that seven. So we can make all those marks pretty quickly. After filling out this seven, you want to come up here and notice what can be in this cell. We have three candidates possible here in column four, one, two, and a four. Well, a one and a four both see this cell, so this has to be your two which creates a one, four naked pair, all right? When the only two possibilities left, the same two cans, that's a naked pair. And so we can mark the naked pair right there. And if you look here in block eight, now we have the one, four there. We need a two, six, and an eight. Well, I have an eight and a two right here. So this actually has to be your six. And then we can kind of work our way across row nine here. And you might notice one that you have this four coming down column nine, so this is the only place left for a four, and this leaves a two, five, six here in block nine, in column nine. Well, I got a two and a six here. This has to be your five, and now this creates a two, six naked pair. We'll come back to that, but with this five now, we have three candidates, uh, cells that we need to fill out here in row nine. We got the one, four there, so it's a one, four, or seven. I already got a one in column two, so this is gonna be a four, seven. And then with the four right here, this is going to be a one seven. But this two six is going to be real nice. And what's nice about it is it's creating some more by value cells. And so that's going to be my first tip I'll leave to you. X, Y wings require BVC. So you got to have by value cells. If they have three candidates in there, you can't use it. If it's one, obviously you're solving it for that one single. If it's four or more, no good. It's got to be by value cells. So the more of these we see, the chances of us being able to find an XY wing get even better. This 
two and six naked pair also acts as a pointing pair. So two and six can't be anywhere else along column nine. You have a six right here and you have these two sixes. So we can solve for a six right here in block three because that's the only place left for a six. Okay, now let's work with these threes here. Okay, you got this three coming up. Column two, you got this three cutting across row one. So the threes are now a pointing pair here in block one. They're living in the same two spot or living the two spots in the same column, column one. So a three can't be anywhere else along column. What that means is you can't have threes in these spots anymore. And you have this three cutting down column two, this three cutting across row seven. You can solve for three right here. It's the only place left for a three in block seven. Nice. Let's come back over here to column nine. I didn't really show everything we could do with those buy value cells over here. So what you need, since you have this two, six, four, five, and nine, you need a one, three, seven, eight. Well, you might notice that you have a one and seven here in row three, and then you also have a one and seven here in row four. So the one and seven cannot be in any of those two cells. So those have to be the three and the eight. And then the one and sevens are limited there. So what we have is basically a naked pair, and another naked pair so three eight and the one seven that's going to come in handy here in just a bit and let's come across row one because there's something similar going on here bonnie put something uh very similar in regards to this as well you got a one two three six nine you need a four five seven eight and what you might notice is you have a seven and eight looking at this cell and you have a seven and eight looking here in this cell in column seven so if these two cells are limited to a four and a five which means these cells have to be a seven or eight. More BVCs for us. This is good. And it's gonna start, one of these is gonna come into play with that XY wing. I am telling you now. Okay, after doing that, we wanna do is kind of look here at what this eight is doing. So the eight cuts across row two. It makes a pointing pair of eight. So there's two spots for an eight in block one. It's in column one. So eight can't be here anymore. With this eight cutting across, you're actually gonna create another pointing pair of eights right here in block four here in column three. And so what that means is now the eights are limited to these two spots here in block seven. They can't be here because of this pointing pair. They can't be here because of this pointing pair. Uh, another way to look at it is that it's a claiming pair because the eights can't be in these two spots. Either way, you want to limit the eights right there. And now with the nines, there's something really neat going on here. You got this nine cutting across row seven and nine. So the nines are limited to columns one and two here in block seven. If you look up here in block one, you'll notice that the nine can also not be in column three. They're limited, even though it's three cells, they're limited to columns one and two. Whenever you see this situation, that means that the nines in that third block, so in this case block four, are going to be limited to column three. And since this nine is already cutting across, these nines become a claiming pair. So a claiming pair means that it's two candidates and they are the only possibilities in a particular column for the block all right and so then you can eliminate all other nines like you can't put a nine there anymore because of these two nines awesome this is going to be helpful because it's going to create some more by value sales force we're getting up to that point where we're going to need and find an x y wing so let's look here and see what is left now in block four because block four ends up being the critical block to solve this puzzle we got a one two three you got the four and a six so you need a five seven eight or a nine and we're going to turn this down a bit we got a seven and a nine already in row four we got an eight and a five in row five uh, we have five seven eight nine everywhere there and then if you come over here remember we can't have an eight or a nine because of the claiming and pointing pairs over here all right, we just created some BVCs. Let's look across row six now. You got a one, two, four, six. One, two, three, four, six. We need five, seven, eight, nine. I see a seven, eight right there. So that's a five and a nine. And this would be a five, seven, eight. Okay, we have enough information to find our first XY wing. All right. And so this is my amazing tip number two. Number two is most XY wings will be where one of the pinchers is in the same block as the pivot. So for an XY wing, what we need is we need a pivot cell, a cell that sees the other two cells. 
And it's an XY wings made up of three cannons in all three different combinations. All right. So you got, let's look and see if we can find a good pivot. So we have a lot of BBCs here in block four. Let's look at this five, seven. And so you're going, hey, inside this block, is there, you know, I got a five, seven. Is there a cell that shares a seven? And there's one right here, a seven, nine, or that shares a five, a five, eight. And so we look at five, seven, five, eight. Do we see another buy by sell along the row that is a seven eight? So it would be the third combination of the five seven eight. We got a five seven five eight. We need a seven eight. And no, that's a five seven eight. We can't use that. But you look right here, you got a five seven and seven nine. You look across row six, and you see a five nine. That is a valid XY wing. All right, let's color this up. I love this part. This is our pivot, right? This is the cell that sees the other two cells. We have the one of the pinchers inside the block. This is a seven nine. The other pincher is along the row. So they both see the same pivot, okay? It's a three combination of five, seven, and nine. This is a valid X, Y wing. And what does this mean? Easy way to look at it is this is a five, then this cell would be a nine. If this cell is a seven, this cell would be a nine. And so by the XY wing rule, any cell that sees these two yellow cells, you can eliminate a nine. All right, so we can't have any nines along here anymore. And you can't have a nine right here anymore. And this is awesome. Since we have a claiming pair and we have a Snyder mark, we know we're going to be able to solve a cell. I love this. All right, so you can eliminate the nine from right there. We're going to be able to solve this cell now for a nine. Great. And this brings me up to my fun fact about Bondi, who put this nice strategy in here. I asked Bondi, what he got you into setting Sudoku puzzles? And he said it began during high school. He was playing Sudoku casually. He got a little bored with it because Sudoku.com didn't have enough options. And this is very common. Um, he got into cracking the cryptic again. He also credits his wife. He said that reintroduced him to Sudoku. And so he wanted to seek and solve advanced strategies. CTC helped him with that. He started seeing some more advanced techniques, variant rules, and he started appreciating the logic there. And so after seeing some setters featured on there, he decided to start creating his own Sudoku puzzles. And that's about the point in 2021 where I started finding his puzzles and featured them on my channel. I love hearing what inspires these setters to make these puzzles. Okay, let's Get rid of the colors and we'll move on to solve. Remember, there's another XY wing, all right? And it's my third tip. So I haven't given you all my secrets just yet. You're going to love this. Okay, we got this nine. And now you might notice there's no other place for nine in row six. We can actually solve this cell for nine as well. And this is going to create a few more solves that we can do. All right, we can create some more solves here. If you look, and what we can finish row five with, we have a four, six, we got a three, five, eight, nine. We need a one, two, or seven. Well, I have a seven and one right here. This is actually gonna be a two. And now this is gonna be a one, seven. And since we have a naked pair of one, seven, seven and one can't be anywhere else in block six. So now we can limit the seven from there, create another BVC. And let's finish this up. You already have an eight in the column, so this is gonna be a three or a five. We can solve for another two. If you look up the two going up column seven and this two cutting across, we can solve for two right there. And so we were able to solve two nines and solve two twos and we made some progress. But now we're gonna to get to that next X, Y wing. And I tell you this, if you find this next X, Y wing absolutely cool, you think it's way awesome, Timberlake, then you need to subscribe to Smart Hobbies. And so I'm gonna review my third fact and then i'll show you where that xy wing is and my third amazing tip about xy wings is that though it's not common you can have an xy wing that spans three separate blocks okay and that's what we have right here but here's the really really cool part that i want you to know we're going to use the same pivot okay we're going to start right here at this five seven and we're going to create another xy wing that's crazy how are we going to do that well, you might notice that we just created a BVC right here for the five and eight. So I got a five, seven here and I got a five, eight there. So 
we have three candidates there, five, seven, and eight. We already have two of the pairs, five, seven, five, eight. We need to find a seven, eight. Can we find a seven, eight within this block or in this column? If you look up the column, there's our seven, eight right there. Awesome. This is our next and most amazing X, Y wing. I thought this was so cool that I could use the same pivot for these. So what this means is if this is a five, that's an eight. If this is a seven, that's going to be an eight. So no matter what you do, one of these two yellow cells has to be an eight. We can eliminate an eight from any cell that sees both of them. So this cell right here, you can eliminate an eight. And we're going to be able to make some more solves. If you're just not familiar and you want some more practice on X, Y wings, I made a great tutorial. I'll put a link to it here. Check it out. And while you're at it, subscribe to some more hobbies and you will solve these advanced strategies even better. Okay, let's get rid of our colors. Bondi set us up, gave us two great XY wings. What is that going to do for us? Well, now we know that this has to be a 7. That's got to be a 1. This has to be a 7. That has to be a 1. We're going to start cleaning up a lot of these BVCs, and I love it when we get to this part. If you look up column 8, we we're missing two candidates, a 5 and 8. I got a 5 8 here. I have a 5 and 8. I have an 8 here already, so this now has to be your five, which means we're going to be able to clean up block six. That's an eight, that's a three, and that's a five. Since that's a three, you have an eight right there. Nice, because this five, you're going to finish up that four and a five right there. We're going to finish up block three with a three. And now because of the seven, this has to be your eight. Really nice here. All right. And then because of this three, we uh, displace that Snyder three. We can solve for three right there. Anytime you remove a Snyder mark, you know you're going to be able to make a solve right away so seven nine is what's missing in block one i got a seven right there so here's your seven and here's your nine i don't see a nine in block two so there's going to be your nine and then we're going to finish this full house in row three with a four nice so i got my three i got my nine we're going to displace the snyder nine right here it means we can solve for a nine here in blocks seven which displaces that snyder eight we can solve for an eight right there I love it. And now I don't see an eight here in block eight. So it means this has to be an eight. I don't see a two either. So that's gotta be your two, which is allows us to solve for two and a six here in block nine. All right, I got another full house, which means I can solve for a six right there, which disambiguates this four to six right here, looking great. And then what else can we do? All right, we got the seven, which means this is gonna be your four. This is going to be your seven, and this is going to be your one, and this is going to be your four. So we clean up all of those cells. Because of this five, this has got to be your eight. And because of the seven, along with the eight, we got a five right here, a seven right here. Two more candidates. We're missing a one. I see a one in column one, so that's got to be your one. And the last cell is a five. I revealed that Bonnie started setting puzzles because he was fascinated by advanced techniques. If you want to see a different advanced strategy featured in one of his puzzles, then check this video out. Thank you, Bonnie, for being my Friday featured setter, and thank you so much for watching.